Good Monday afternoon. I'm Dr. Martha Buchanan, Director and Health Officer here at the Knox County Health Department. Our moment of gratitude today is dedicated to the families of our Health Department team members. Our team members have been working long hours away from their families and loved ones, which has put a lot of responsibility on their spouses, children, and other family members to run errands, clean the house, teach their children, and keep them busy and do all of the important things that keep life going. Please know that your efforts have not gone, on, gone unnoticed and they are so appreciated by your loved ones who, are who, are, who have worked dedicated months of long hours to our community's pandemic response. As a reminder, we are working through different opportunities for testing that keep folks from waiting outside in the heat. As we work, out the, as we work out these details, we are not testing today. We are still working through the details and we hope to have more information regarding the new format this week. We want to thank you for understanding as, as we navigate through these changes. In regard to testing, on a typical, in a typical week, we are testing five days a week. Walk-in testing is on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, and even some, some weekends, we attempt to do targeted testing in order to reach folks who are considered high risk or may have less access to testing. Just like testing supplies, our team's capacity is not unlimited. Our testing teams are working long, hard hours to provide a, a high volume of testing, but they also have other responsibilities as well. It is imperative that we focus our resources where they do the most good, while also taking into account our supplies, capacity, and funding. We want to remind folks that we are not the only place where you can get tested for COVID-19. We have a map on our website where you can find other opportunities for testing. As a reminder, a negative test is just a snapshot in time. While testing is critical to identify and break the chain of transmission, it does not prevent you from getting the virus. This prevents you from getting the virus six feet of distancing, washing your hands, staying home if you're six. Those are all prevention measures. The test is not a prevention measure. If you're concerned that you have COVID, we certainly want you to get tested. But please remember that a negative test does not mean you won't ever get the virus or you're immune to the virus. That said, we encourage everyone who gets tested to treat their test result as positive until they get the result back. That means you need to quarantine until, your result, uh, until you get your result. We know that's difficult, but it is critical in reducing the spread of this virus. This also puts less of a burden on our contact tracers, as if you've been home, you haven't been exposing others to the illness, and you have fewer contacts for us to reach out to. So please stay home and don't host a dinner party if you're waiting for your test results. We sincerely appreciate all of the folks in our community who are staying home while awaiting their results. You're making a difference in reducing the spread of the virus. Now we'll move on to the local situation. We have 2,314 confirmed cases in Knox County. Additionally, we have 113 probable cases. 985 of our cases have recovered, giving us 13, 1,311 active cases. 161 individuals have been hospitalized at some point in their illness. 44 Knox County residents are currently hospitalized. And we are saddened to report we have an additional death due to complications of COVID, bringing our total to 19. I'll now open it up for questions. All right, as a reminder, please go ahead and submit your questions in. Um, first question we have is from Megan with WBLT. Can you explain the role contact tracers play in helping to track and stop the spread of COVID-19? Sure, it's a great question. So um, I talk, I'm gonna give you a little context and talk about the process itself. So the first person we talked to is the case. And when we talked to the case, we asked them a whole lot of questions about where they've been recently, who they've been with, who was there, what were they doing? How far apart did you sit? Did you wear a mask? Did you share food? Did you share a drink? All of those things, we're gonna ask you all of those questions. And as, as frustrating as that might be, it's very important for us to have that information. So then after they've named the people they've been in close contact to within the time frame indicated based on their illness, 
we then reach out to all of those people to find out if they're sick, educate them about the disease, educate, educate them about the risk. We don't tell them who, who named them as a contact. We just say they've been named as a contact. Uh, a lot of people figure that out on their own or the, or the case tells them. Um, and then we ask those people to stay home and, and we check on them every day. And what that does is so if I'm sick and say I had dinner with you and we didn't, we were closer than six feet for more than 10 minutes and I didn't have a mask on, then you're going to be one of my close contacts. And so if I, they re, we reach out to you and educate you and ask you to stay home, stay in quarantine, you, if you get sick, you're not going to have contacts to make sick. So when we ask you to stay home and stay in quarantine, we really mean really limit your activity and even reduce the even contact with your family if you can. I know that's not always possible, but that is how we break the chain of transmission by quarantining people and isolating cases. Ron Paul with WBIR, um, he's asking if you've seen cases inside daycares locally and also if we've seen any clusters in daycares. I'm sorry, I'm looking at charity. Um, we have had cases in daycares. Um, we actually have cases of stuff in daycares throughout the year, not just COVID. Um, so we've had some COVID cases in daycares. And as usual, we get great cooperation with our daycare providers, our child care providers um, who don't want to make any more children sick and certainly don't want to make any of their staff sick. From Vincent with the Sentinel, Knox County School District has stated to the press that they are using several metrics for their reopening plan in consultation from KCHD. What specific guidance are you giving them with respect to reopening? Well, right now we're just uh, informing of this local situation um, and advising them to continue focusing on the five core actions of physical distancing, wearing a face mask, washing your hands, cleaning surfaces, and staying home if you're sick. I'm also from Vincent with a Sentinel. Um, he says this question is from a Knox County parent and a new Sentinel reader. Anderson County and Hamilton County have specific thresholds for phased reopening in schools. These are specific percentages of active cases versus population that determine reopening thresholds for the schools. Are you calculating similar figures on behalf of KCS? Um, we've not been asked to do that. Certainly, um, it's a great question to also ask the schools. From Jeff with WATE, could you walk us through the criteria for a new testing space beyond AC and shade? What are you looking for? We're looking for a space big enough to be able to let people stand in line inside um, and, and maintain six feet of uh, social distancing or physical distancing. Um, and also the other thing, other thing that we really need um, is to have good Wi-Fi access. Um, and a space is going to be available for a long time uh, because we anticipate doing testing for quite a while. So um, those, and we also want it to be convenient, preferably um, on the bus line so that our citizens, folks who don't drive can access it and also walkable uh, so that folks who maybe don't take the bus or don't drive uh, could walk up to it. From Claire with WUOT, have you looked at the White House Coronavirus Task Force Governor's Report issued last week? If so, what do you think of the recommendations that Knox County limit social gatherings to 25 people and use pooled testing? So we have looked at that and shared it with the Board of Health, who will be, who will, I'm sure, review it before our meeting on Wednesday. And I, I anticipate it being part of the discussion that evening. Also from Claire with WOT, can those that get a COVID test without symptoms still go to work while they are awaiting results? Uh, if you look at the Board of Health's most recent uh, recommendations, they're recommending that those folks do not go to work, even if they are asymptomatic. We want them to quarantine to reduce the risk. We know there's asymptomatic spread or pre-symptomatic spread. So if you get a test, we really want you to quarantine. From Megan with WBLT, some of our viewers have expressed concerns regarding the accuracy of COVID-19 tests. How confident are health officials when it comes to the accuracy rate of the tests? I think the... Uh, PCR or polymerase chain reaction test where you either have a swab put in your nose or a swab put in your throat looking for the uh, DNA of the virus. Are, those are very accurate tests. It's a testing model that we use for lots of other things. So those specific tests that get sent away to the laboratories are the most accurate. And then uh, some of the rapid tests are less accurate. Um, so the tests that get sent to the lab are much more accurate. And even the rapid tests where you swab the nose or swab the throat um, are a little less accurate than the ones you send out off to the lab. From Scott with Compass, 
questions. Uh, these are some questions he says from readers. If someone tests positive and later gets tested again and are positive a second time, are they counted as one confirmed case or two? Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> People were moving around in the room and I didn't. Uh, can you read that again? Yep, I, I apologize. Okay. Uh, if someone gets, uh, if someone tests positive and later gets tested again and are positive a second time, are they counted as one confirmed case or two? Um, they're counted as one confirmed case. Um, his follow -up question and that's is, per Tennessee Department of Health guidance. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, his follow-up question is, are there, quote, false positives? And if so, how are they counted? Um, there are always, every test has a false positive rate. Um, and, but we consider a positive a positive. With a disease like COVID-19 that is so highly contagious, uh, we want to make sure that every positive case is isolated and reduce the risk to the community. So a positive is a positive. There are certainly false positives. Um, with any test we do, they're false positive, false negatives. From Paul with WBIR, is the Board of Health mask mandate something you are now enforcing with regard to the businesses they have authority over, restaurants, et cetera? So we are um, educating and informing the uh, businesses that we have, uh, that we have, with that we regulate, sorry. Um, so we continue to do what we've been doing um, and that's informing and educating, if necessary, uh, sending a letter to remind the person who owns or operates the facility uh, of the mandate. We're sharing that information with them. Uh, so we're doing all the things that we normally do to help enforce public health laws and rules. Uh, public health laws and rules are always dependent on the community following the guidelines. Paul's follow-up question is, has mask use by restaurant employees been added to the inspection reports? If not, is it being considered? Well, the inspection reports are determined by um, the Department of Health at the state level. Um, and to my knowledge, it is not being considered. From Brian Hornback, have you received any complaints from the early voting centers Friday, Saturday, or today? I'm not aware of any complaints from early voting, no. From Scott with Compass, can you give an update on the hospital capacity situation? Are any hospitals transferring COVID-19 patients to other facilities because of a lack of ICU beds or ventilators? We'll, we'll, talk about, we'll be discussing uh, hospital capacity on Wednesday, but also that's a great question for the hospitals. They know what they're doing uh, internally. We're not involved with those specific plans. We, we don't develop their plans for them. From Jeff with WATE, um, any progress in finding a new testing provider? What's the test result turnaround time now? Um, I am not sure what, I think the test result turnaround time continues to be long. We are uh, looking at several options for new testing uh, providers um, that uh, it's a long list of folks that we've been given by the state. Um, we've reached out to those and um, are hoping to be able to have some of those uh, on board. And I guess I'm being told now for one, it's about 12 days for the lab that we have been using. From Claire with WUOT, why didn't the Board of Health receive the White House report before last week's meeting as it was issued last Tuesday? Did the Health Department receive the recommendations from the governor's office before it was released to the public Friday? I saw it when it was released to the public on Friday um, and since then have sent it to the Board of Health. From Vincent with the Sentinel, do you have any updates from the federal officials who met with you the week before last? Uh, no, we received their uh, report. Um, and we've received some resources from them, and I know that they have connected some local folks with some folks at the federal level for support. Um, so we actually have gotten a lot of uh, resources from them that will be shared, that have been shared with our community and will be shared with our staff. From Alex with News Talk 98.7, through contact tracing, have you been able to track any cases back to local gyms, or have you not seen much spread at gyms? We haven't specifically tracked any cases back to local gyms. Any other questions, please go ahead and type them into that chat feature now. All right, not seeing any other questions come in. So thank you all for joining us and we will see you again on Wednesday at the same time.